welcome back to ds trucks in today's video i want to show you guys the power inverter install that i've been working on i finally got it done so check it out here in the back seat i installed a 3000 watt power inverter now if you know anything about power inverters then you probably know that i went a little bit overboard with the 3000 watt inverter but you know if i could do things different i would have went with something a little smaller but at the end of the day i already had it and i'm not really going to use the full capacity of the inverter uh, now the reason i did this is this factory inverter right here has been letting me down on a hot day i cannot charge my computer it generally will charge my computer in the winter time but when it's hot like 90 degrees outside it will not charge my computer so here's a quick look at my computer charger that it won't charge and you know this is it right here uh it, it puts out uh 19 volts at 6.2 amps so i mean honestly it puts it puts this factory inverter right at its limit and the factory inverter will not charge a milwaukee supercharger now it will actually charge the smaller milwaukee batteries particularly the 12 volt batteries but the 18 volt high output batteries it won't charge those with the factory inverter so i went ahead and installed this now this was a very very expensive and complicated project and there are a few mistakes that i made that i will talk about in the video now when you look here you can see that i used marine grade heat shrink on all the lug connectors uh here you can see it is a four zero uh wire now i've been saying four aught i don't think that's the correct way to say it it's actually four zero so it's four times as quick or as thick as zero gauge wire so it's like four zero gauge wires thick per cable and that is what we did i don't know exactly how to say that i don't think it's four aught i think it's just four i don't know how to pronounce it but it's four zeros so zero gauge times four per wire is what we used now that is the first mistake i made though i wish i would have went with marine grade wire this is just welding wire it is good wire but the uh, actual casing is not a marine grade wire and that is my mistake now to compensate with that for that a little bit i did install a plastic cover on the wire the entire length of the wire all the way to the battery now let's pop underneath the hood and take a look at the battery connections all right guys so the negative is hooked up and i did have to do a little bit of modification to the terminal in order to get this but ultimately that is one of the our achilles heels we're trying to run this much voltage is there's no way to hit to really connect four zero wire to the battery so for the positive terminal i actually had to make a hole and put the an extra bolt through it in order to get it to connect to the positive lead and on a negative terminal it already had a stud there so i was able to go through and then from there my wiring goes down drops down the fender and let's take a look underneath the truck dropping under the truck oh all right so here you can see where the wiring comes through and you can see by the new wiring it's not dirty yet um i did buy some commercial grade zip ties to hold the wiring in place and then it runs down here um i haven't really you know i'm still messing with this and i haven't figured out exactly uh how i'm going to secure it but i might put a another zip tie with a christmas tree maybe here on this emergency brake cable so it kind of sits like that but it's not really necessary I haven't really you know decided for sure yet but that would work pretty well if i did that um coming down the side of the truck here let's keep working our way back all right working our way back we've got a christmas tree zip tie right there holding the wire to the body and then we're going to the other side of the frame where we have the wire going up against the body with zip ties holding it to the body these are actually located in push pin holes holding the wire in now we do have the inverter on the passenger side and it's tying into the driver's side battery and uh 
we do have to cross our DPF filter. Now, in order to get across the filter, I just put the wire on top of this cross member so it wouldn't be close to the heat of the exhaust. And it's just going on top of the cross member and you cannot see the wire anymore because it is on top of the cross member with a zip tie just wrapped around the entire cross member right there. All right, let's keep making our way up in the, to the truck. All right, making our way underneath the truck, you can see that the wire sneaks up above that cross member and it goes through ah, and you cannot see the wire. All right, so coming to the other side of the frame rail, you can see that wire starting to show up as it pops out from uh, the other side here and it goes up and it makes its way into the truck through this hole. Um, through this uh, plastic grommet. I decided to go right through that plastic with two holes. I used a hole saw to get through. Um, now that is the negative and then the power wire actually goes right above the exhaust and it has a, uh, a um, special heat protective wrap to keep the heat to reflect as much of the heat as possible from the DPF away from the wire and it is zip tied into place and the zip ties are actually covered by the protective heat wrap as well as the wire itself so i did two layers of protective heat wrap first around the wire then the zip ties are holding it and then around the actual zip ties uh, that should be good but we'll do a static regen stationary regen to see how everything holds up but i'm thinking it will be okay but anyway as we see how it goes into the truck let's go to the top side of the truck and see how it all ends up all right guys so here's how things look coming out of the truck it comes right through through this hole here very clean and then shrink wrapped where the plastic ends and then you can see the wire and the shrink wrap there and shrink wrap there and that is it so the system is turned on with the flip of a switch let's uh take a look at that so powered on with the flip of a switch here and I do have a remote that I can install somewhere else in the truck that can turn on the switch. I'm not exactly sure if I can hook this to an upfitter switch somehow, but I have to uh, look into that and see if that is a possibility. But now for the mistakes made. Now, number one, first mistake I made is I should never have gotten a 3000 watt inverter. The reason is, is because that's actually toward the upper end of a pure sine wave inverter and four get our four zero wire is enough but it wants you to be real close to the battery source which is not quite an option just yet that being said i can upgrade down the down the road with a battery bank maybe in the bed of the truck maybe if i could put two rv batteries back here in the battery box uh, right there and then have a shorter run right to the inverter then a 3000 watt inverter inverter is not a bad idea or if I even move the entire thing to the toolbox get a toolbox set up that holds everything and just the trucks can uh, charge the battery bank when needed or have it on the solar charger but it will be something that can be upgraded later now it's not advisable for me to run a full 3000 watts through this thing all at once really normally i'll be right about half its capacity so if anything good can be said about that maybe it'll last a little bit longer because i'm not going to be pushing it toward its upper limits you know i'm going to be staying within a decent range with this inverter i'm not going to be you know if it's a 2000 watt inverter and i'm right there at like 15 1600 watts on a regular basis which get pretty close with three of these going with 12 amp hour batteries you know that might stress a lesser inverter a little bit more versus a 3000 watt inverter while it's not advisable that i run the full 3000 watts in order to do that i'd have to be in high idle and it might be too much for the wiring just because of the distance um at these distances they started to recommend even thicker wire or I can actually double up the wiring and put another set of wires going to it, which is uh, a lot. But I think this will be fine, even though this is more inverter than, inverter than I need. As long as I'm, you know, somewhat responsible, I should be okay. And if I were doing this for like a customer's car or something like that, I wouldn't do this because if I were to run this, even for my other work truck where the other guys are using it, 
I wouldn't run it over capacities like this, but this is my daily and I'm just going to not run it at 3000 watts. So that's kind of how I'm playing that. Uh, if I'm going to do my other truck, I wouldn't do more than 2000 watts, maybe even 1500 watts. And still, I would probably use a four watt wire, but a marine grade wire, uh, unless I can get real close to the battery, I would probably go with the four watt wire still because to convert 12 volt to uh, 120 volt it just takes a thick wire when you're on a 12 volt system in fact if you're going with a 48 volt or 24 volt you can use smaller wiring than you can on a 12 volt system so a lot of stuff to learn messing around with this uh, power inverter stuff but it is good to know because this is one of those things that it's hard to find a good upfitter for and just knowing a little bit of stuff being able to make your own wires i've you know got the tools now to make my own cables and lugs connections and shrink wrap and all that stuff so that's that's all cool but in hindsight i should have went with the smaller inverter the truck itself makes 397 amps but it has to be at a certain engine speed a higher engine speed than idle in order to have that kind of amperage available and even still the uh, inverter says right on it that it draws 300 amps at like 13 volts it gives you a range of the voltage that it operates at between like 12 and 13 volts it draws 300 amps maximum I don't think that accounts for a surge but it draws 300 amps maximum uh, that may be higher for a surge you know in order to start up electronics it takes more energy than it takes to run electronics so the batteries uh they should be fine for now but typically it's going to be advisable to run this with the engine running because these are not deep cycle batteries and they're not going to do well being drained lower low or anything like that so uh the batteries themselves can handle the, any surges and then the 397 amps alternators running at full throttle might be able to get close to running this running this system but i don't i don't foresee me really pushing it it wouldn't be a good idea for me to really push it um but mostly anything that i plug into this will be fine um will be fine so anyway that's it for my inverter install i know there were some mistakes made it was a little bit of a learning process but if this video helps you if you want an a power inverter like this in your truck maybe you want to charge drill batteries or stuff like that and you're maybe hopefully this can help you you know get you know if you're like me and you're thinking let me get the biggest and the baddest inverter that i can find sometimes the biggest is not the best so if you're thinking about doing this on the truck similar to this without adding battery banks and stuff like that maybe consider a smaller inverter not the 3000 watt pure sign maybe a 2000 watt or 1500 watt a uh, thousand watts it would, it would be cool too but you're not gonna run you know too too much on a thousand watts but it's still good you know you can run two of those milwaukee superchargers a good amount of stuff with just a thousand watts the the stock converter at 400 watts max is just not it's just good for cell phone chargers and a smaller laptop i've got a little bit of a high performance laptop and it's just not working maybe a tablet it'd be all right but man it starts to have a hard time pretty pretty quick so Anyway, that's it for our power inverter install. Comment below and tell me what you think. Thank you for watching DS Trucks. My name is Sean. See you in the next video. Over and out.